Okay, let's go over to our is by cell over here. And let's go look at what's the most recent. So let's take a look at this food and beverage manufacturer and retailer in the greater Indy area. It's like sales multiple just from the start. Again, I'm using a plugin called Deal Analyzer. It's in Google Chrome. You can download it for, I think it's $10 a month for the premium version. Uh, sales multiple is 3.17, so that's good. Anything between two, or, two and four is good. Uh, debt service is 222000 a year. That's probably based on a 10-year SBA loan. Uh, net cash flow is 219000 a year. So that means uh, you're going to put about 140000 down and you'll make 220 your first year, leaving 100 in the bank. Uh, you should be at roughly recovering your cash flow in, in one year or your cash down that you put down in one year. So roughly 100% return. You should see something like 120% return in here what it should say, 157%. There you go, right there. Okay, it says inventory is $20,000. EBITDA is 371. So that is the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. That's interesting because it says cash flow is 441. EBITDA is 371. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Confidential sale of a unique food and beverage retailer that manufactures its own products. So well established businesses in the greater Indianapolis area. Cash flow is very strong. Revenue and profit have increased annually every year, including 2020. The current owner is looking for an owner operator to preserve the history and take this to the next level. Prospective buyers will not be sent confidential information until first interviewing with the broker to see there's potential and serious fit. Buyers not respecting confidentiality will not be considered for this transaction. Inventory included in asking price. That's good. Employees, 10. All equipment is in working order and will operate as advertised. Okay. It's always important to address competition, but this clash flowing operation is built on a solid foundation. This company will see organic year over year growth because of its committed customers. Deals pre-approved by SBA team at Live Oak. Live Oak's a, the largest SBA lender in the United States. The owner is committed to pro providing the necessary resource for a smooth transition, training and support. Ownership will sign, will sign an employment contract. The owner is pursuing other opportunities. See, that's a bad sign right there. Why is the owner pursuing other opportunities? If this opportunity is so great, right, why, why are they pursuing other opportunities that aren't so great? Hmm. Weird. Okay, drowns the broker. The first thing I want to think about is the owner's pursuing other opportunities is weird. The cash flow and the EBITDA don't really make sense. Why is EBITDA, unless they're adding back the owner's pay, which gets to 441, which again, if you're gonna hire a, an operations manager, it's gonna cost 100,000 a year. So is the owner only paying himself 70,000 a year? Is that what they're saying here? 371 plus 70 would be 441, right? So that's weird. Uh, I guess you maybe you could get away with paying somebody 70, but then it's going to bring you right back down to 371. So, you, so you're really paying a, almost a five multiple now. Um, if debt service is 222, you're doing 371. I mean, I guess you'll still make 150 roughly if you can replace the owner for 70,000, which yeah, that's a stretch. You also have to consider that there's going to be payroll taxes. So not only are you having to replace the owner's $70,000 in pay, but then you're also having to pay for their payroll taxes, which is in their payroll, workers comp, uh, unemployment, all that stuff adds up probably eight to 10% more. So if it's $70,000 and another about 7,000 on top of that for um, the company match portion for an employee. So, you know, this could be worth looking into uh, I've already contacted the broker on this one, um, but it, they really want somebody who's on site, which to me, it, 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 it makes it sound like they're trying to make the numbers work without the numbers working. <laughs> Whenever they say we need an active owner, to me, that just means we want to pretend like this is our cash flow number, when in reality, this is the cash flow number, right? Which is a bunch of BS. So 
anyways, I, I wouldn't pursue this one unless you can get them to come down a bit on price to about 1.2. I think that's probably where it should be. 1.15 is probably where it should be, right? If we look at four times 371, it's roughly or 3.5 times 371. What is that? Uh, let's see if we can. Times 371. Okay, it's not going to pull that up. Let's pull up the calculator here. Okay. 371 times 3.5, 1.298. So that should really be the offer right there. 1.298. About 100,000 less than what they're asking for. I really think it should be closer to 1.2. I have no idea. We don't even know what this is. I mean, what is a food and beverage manufacturer and retailer? So, yeah, it's probably overpriced by about 200, $150,000 to $200,000. Now, they could come, back, come down on that. You could get them to do like an owner carry of 10%, which would bring it down to one point. In other words ask for 10% seller financing, that'd be $140,000 less 1.4 million. So now you're at 1.26 million, right? Um, the numbers make a lot more sense at 1.26 million. And then you could have that fully, fully subject to the SPA loan, which means basically you wouldn't owe anything on it. You would just accumulate interest over that 10 year period. And then you would start paying the loan, loan on the 11th year or whenever you were finished paying the SBA loan off. Real estate is not included in this. Actually, doesn't even say. Yeah, I don't know. This one could be interesting. The numbers are right where they need to be, a little bit high. I don't understand the active owner thing. It seems seems weird. Anyways, hope that helps, guys. Yeah, we'll 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 leave it with that for today. Um, Keep up the journey, keep looking. Remember, we want to shoot between two and four. We want to think about what has competitive advantage versus somebody else. What's the unique value proposition that this company has versus another company coming into the area, right? Like why, why would I do business with this company versus another company, right? That type of thing. Do they have some type of quality that is just so far above and beyond everybody else? Do they have such a name brand in the region? that they're that much better, right? Like what makes them so much better than everyone else? So that's that's really what we gotta look at. And then uh, look at the cash flow numbers, how likely is it that this that this will maintain itself for 10 years? The one other thing that's, that is also a red flag on this one is the fact they said have increased annually every year, which means, which makes me think how much have they increased, right? Because we only have three, 370 here. So before was it 320? And then before that was a 280, right? How stable is it? Are they operating on contracts? You know, is it yearly contracts? Is it two year contracts? Is it some magic voodoo dust that the owner used to get a couple extra contracts right before they sold the company? And then it goes right back down to 200. And now you're underwater, right? Debt service is 222. So you have to be really careful when you have a company that's like supposedly growing to see why, what's going on here that that is growing so much, right? So anyways, didn't mean to go on that for 10, out, 10 minutes, but uh, hopefully that gives you a little insight into how to think through these, these deals and how to make sure that you're not going to get screwed. If you do end up closing on something and then you get it and then it can't cash flow. See you later, guys. Thank you.